How did the Simpsons go from this to this? No, this. Part 1 Origin Story The history books will tell you that it all began in 1985, when James Brooks contacted Matt Groening to develop a series of short animated skits called Bumpers for The Tracy Ullman Show. But it didn't begin then, it began way before that, in 1977 to be precise when Groening solely began the production of the comic strip, Life in Hell. If you think The Simpsons are weird, check out Life in Hell. <laughs> You're in for a shock. You see, James Brooks wouldn't have given Groening that offer if he didn't get to read one strip of Life in Hell, a strip which he received as a gift from his fellow producer, Polly Platt. When James Brooks first met Groening with the offer, James intended for Groening to adapt his Life in Hell characters for the show. But Groening was scared that if he did what James wanted, he would lose the ownership rights to his Life in Hell characters, so guess what he did? Groening created an entirely new batch of characters, which the world now knows as The Simpsons. I'm very fast with this. That's right, The Simpsons were not even supposed to look like this in the first place, or this. They were supposed to look like Groening's characters from his comic strips. Matt had already reached James' office to pitch the idea for the shorts with his Life in Hell characters before he realized that he would be practically signing over the rights to Life in Hell. So while he was waiting in the lobby of Brooks' office for the pitch meeting, he quickly changed it and drew new sketches and with his new sketches, he formulated his version of a dysfunctional family. His family. The Simpsons are a combination of my own family uh, and uh, and the TV that I grew up watching, a lot of families and, and television sitcoms when I was a kid have all sort of mutated into The Simpsons. Matt grew up watching all the old Warner Brothers cartoons. The likes of Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Roadrunner, as well as Rocky and Bullwinkle. So when he was quickly designing these characters, he kept his character design simple to mimic the characters from the classic cartoons he watched as a kid. The, the characters are real. Um, the, the, it's an amazing collaboration between great animators, great, great actors, uh, great writers. The Simpsons family that you see on screen are also loosely based on and inspired by Matt's real-life family. He used the names of his own father, mother, and sisters. Matt named the buffoonish Homer after his own father, so out of guilt and to make up for it, he then named his son Homer. He even planted an easter egg on Homer. If you look closely at Homer's head, you will see that his thin hairline and his ears form the initials MG, which could be his name or his mother's name. Matt Groening or Margaret Groening. His younger sisters are named Lisa and Maggie, and he also has another sister named Patty, but no brother named Bart. His brother is named Mark. Even his grandfather is named Abram. I can't tell who's more annoyed with me, the ones who were named or the ones who weren't. Matt grew up in Portland, Oregon, which neighbors a town called Springfield. As a child, he loved that the sitcom Father Knows Best was set in Springfield because he imagined it being his Springfield, so that's what inspired the setting of The Simpsons. What I try to do as my life's work is to bridge the gap between the, the, the funny artifice that I saw on TV and what I knew was real. And I think that's partly the success of The Simpsons. I remember that very well Matt coming the first day. We were all happy to meet him. We loved Life in Hell. And he was a great guy. And he went through these sketches for the first episode, Good Night Simpson. Matt's sketch was approved, and it was handed to three animators to work on it. And thus, on the 19th of April, 1987, the world was introduced to The Simpson family. Homer, Marge, Bart, Lisa, and Maggie. The Simpsons shorts were akin to the one-minute TikToks, Reels, and YouTube shorts of today, except it aired on TV during the halftime of the Tracy Ullman show. Matt, in collaboration with James Brooks, a small team of animators, voice actors, artists, writers, producers, and Fox, produced 48 of the bumper shorts. And 48 shorts was all it took for The Simpsons family to become an instant hit. The audiences couldn't get enough of the quirky, interesting, and complex characters who made use of clever humor. James noticed that they were getting a lot of attention, and on the other hand, he knew that Matt had always dreamed of making a primetime animated series, even though there were none at the time. So that's when the million-dollar idea hit him. 
why don't I turn this into an animated show? So, James Brooks, with his background experience in making sitcoms such as The Mary Tyler Moore Show and Matt Groening with his experience as a cartoonist and animator, came together to form the perfect pair to create The Simpsons. And on the 17th of December, 1989, the first full-length episode, Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, aired. Now you know how it went from this to this. How about this? Part 2 Evolution The making of the show was just the beginning. As the years went by, the show underwent and is still undergoing changes and development. Yes, the characters have been stuck in a floating timeline cursed to never age, but the timeline does not have the power to put a stop to the evolution they have gone through. Not only the characters have evolved, but also the technology in the show and the animation of the show has evolved as well. Another key evolution is Disney acquiring Fox, but we're getting to that. The foundation of the Simpson humor began in the very first shorts, Good Night. We see Homer and Marge tuck their kids into bed, but their well-intentioned efforts inadvertently frighten the children, leading all three of them to seek solace in Marge and Homer's own bed. That idea that no good intention is above going terribly wrong became a foundation of The Simpsons' humor. The humor has a concept, and the ideas that would stem from that would be limitless. The Simpsons now has 750 episodes, and each of these episodes feature unique comedic puns and sketches. The first two seasons of the show played a significant role in making the show very appealing. However, what made The Simpsons truly successful wasn't merely its defiance of what was considered the norms of sitcom. It resonated because, in many ways, The Simpson family was so relatable they didn't hide their imperfections. Parents could relate to Homer and Marge's internal struggle of parenting while children could relate to either the nerdy Lisa or the prankster Bart. As time went on, characters kept on getting added. Some of the characters were even intended by the show's creators to be one-time characters who would perform functions in Springfield. A number of these characters have gained expanded roles and subsequently starred in their own episodes. According to Groening, the show adopted the concept of a large supporting cast from the comedy show SCTV. You can definitely write episodes on secondary characters, and they can be related to, usually or tangentially at least related to the family or maybe completely related to the family but it works very well so from this to this and this is still not the final stage of evolution i mean one of the ways the show I think stays fresh now is by bringing in outside talent to do the couch gags for us. Even the couch gags have evolved with the creators using fans of the show to make the art for them. The writers of The Simpsons have handled contemporary themes without fear and made fun of pop culture, politics, and everything in between, which earned them critical praise and a devoted fan base. I mean, look at us. Would we exist without The Simpsons? Would there be a Simpsons universe if there were no Simpsons? The show's run, however, has not been without its share of difficulties. When the show first started blowing up in 1991, Tracy Ullman sued 20th Century Fox for her share of the profits generated by The Simpsons merchandise. She argued that her contract entitled her to a portion of the merchandise earnings resulting from the show. However, James Brooks testified that Ullman had no involvement in the creation of The Simpsons animated shorts featured on The Tracy Ullman Show. Over the course of its run, it has faced a number of controversies, with some viewers and observers holding the show responsible for perpetuating stereotypes and other debates regarding the portrayal of particular characters. On the other hand, it has demonstrated that it can adjust to new circumstances and deal with the problems that have arisen, demonstrating that the program is capable of evolving along with changing social mores. The Simpsons have left a lasting effect on popular culture, providing inspiration for many Simpsons references in other television shows, films, and even internet memes. Even Homer's common curse, though, has made its way into the Oxford English Dictionary. Each season of The Simpsons usually has around 21 to 25 episodes, and the making of one episode takes about six months, with multiple people working on different episodes at the same time. The show's main characters are voiced by just six Emmy Award-winning actors. Dan Castellaneta, Julie Kavner, Nancy Cartwright, 
Yardley Smith, Hank Azaria, and Harry Shearer. The animation for The Simpsons has been handled by various studios over the years. While the early shorts were made by Klasky Chupo in the US, the main series has been animated by different studios both in the US and South Korea because of the high workload. Part 3 – The Simpsons Movies, Spin-Offs, and Other Projects The Simpsons ruled TV and by 2007 it also ruled the cinema. You see, in 2007, the family finally made its way to theaters with The Simpsons Movie. The movie had such an influence before it dropped and its marketing was wonderful. 7-Eleven stores redesigned a dozen of their stores to look like a Pooh's Quickie Marts. Products from the show were brought to life such as Sprinkalicious Donuts, Buzz Cola, Squishy Frozen Drinks, and Krusty O's which sold over 4 million units. Burger King Simpsonized real-life people into Simpsons characters featuring Krusty Burgers instead of Whoppers and had Homer drooling on Whoppers in their commercials. The creators of the movie even ran a contest for which city would host the movie premiere and Springfield, Vermont won the honor. The Simpsons movie was made while the TV series was still being written despite earlier statements from those working on the show that a movie would only happen after the series ended. The idea of a Simpsons movie had been around since the early seasons of the show. James Brooks initially considered turning the Camp Krusty episode into a film but he faced challenges when trying to stretch the story to feature length. For a while, obstacles like not having the right story and a busy team of writers held up the project until it didn't anymore. The movie earned $30.7 million on its opening day in the United States, making it the 25th highest and 5th highest non-sequel opening day revenue of all time. During the run of The Simpsons, there were various ideas for spin-offs, including TV series and movies. The creators have mentioned that many of these were just concepts and might be explored later. Some of these ideas were abandoned or turned into regular episodes. The only spin-off that actually materialized was The Simpsons Movie and there wasn't any other film or TV spin-off until Disney acquired both Fox and Lucasfilm. Disney has gone ahead to milk The Simpsons for Maggie Simpson-based shorts. Now we have Rogue Not Quite One, The Longest Daycare, Playdate with Destiny, The Force Awakens from its Nap, and even The Good, The Bart, and The Loki. Matt Groening has expressed that as long as there are subjects or targets to satirize, The Simpsons will keep producing new episodes. In a humorous reference, his character Troy McClure once joked that Matt will keep making new episodes until it's no longer financially viable. Aside from The Simpsons, Matt has been involved in the creation of two other animated series, Futurama and Disenchantment. Futurama is a science fiction animated sitcom set in the year 3000 featuring a cast that includes a pizza delivery boy from 1999, a robot, and a one-eyed alien. Much like The Simpsons, Futurama provides ample opportunities for social commentary and satire. Disenchantment is another animated sitcom with adult humor akin to The Simpsons and Futurama. It revolves around a rebellious and alcoholic princess named Bean, her elf sidekick, and her personal demon in the fantasy realm of Dreamland. The series premiered its first episode on August 17th, 2018. Part 4 – The Goat of Animated TV Comedy the Simpson family in Springfield has experienced the terms of five U.S. presidents, the rise of the internet era, the conclusion of the Cold War, multiple extended Middle East conflicts, terrorist incidents, natural disasters, and many other significant events. Despite the fact that Homer, Marge, Bart, Lisa, and Maggie have remained the same age, the sense of humor in the world has evolved, in part due to the impact of these characters. 30 plus years since its debut, The Simpsons remains relevant and influential. 30 years have passed, but The Simpsons remains the GOAT of animated TV comedy. Let us know down in the comments section what your favorite thing about The Simpsons is. Don't well to drop a like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.